Very expensive snap-on computer. It does not start. This car won't start. Everything went to crap. It's been a while and I'm happy. Ignore this whole mess that's on this table right now, but right here we have tranny juice. Some of that good tranny juice. And I just want to remind y'all, all these parts I did get from FCP Euro. I will leave the link in the description. They got lifetime warranty on the parts. They sell OE, OEM parts, aftermarket parts. Or if you can't afford the OE parts or the OEM parts, they do sell replica parts. But right here we have tranny solenoids. Um, we are doing a transmission tune, so we got to make sure the tranny doesn't slip and whatnot. We do have a bunch of sleeves for the transmission. And then obviously we do have a new brand new transmission pan along with the transmission bolts. And then what we're going to do right now in the beginning, thermostat and water pump i am not looking forward to doing this i've heard it's very very difficult like i said first time beamer owner i don't really know how to work on bmws like that so pretty nervous last video went great though go ahead and watch it if you haven't already Whew. and you may be asking why are you doing all this maintenance here we have car parts that will get us to around 500 horsepower and well we can't just throw that on we gotta work up to that One thing for sure, definitely be sure to have the bucket under the thermostat at all times. That's the first thing we're taking out. Still, oh my goodness, still going. All right, so when you take out this hose right here, the one that's right on top of this long hose that goes across, that goes into the thermostat, make sure you have the bucket under because I just got coolant in my eyeball, in my nose, in my mouth, and all over my face. We're going to take the thermostat out with these two bolts right here, and then we're going to take out the coolant pump itself. <laughs> oh shoot, that's one of my little turbos. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so let's face it. I barely showed you what I even, how I even took these things out because it was horrible. It was literally horrible and impossible to show you guys how I even took this out. And I'm gonna try my best to explain it in like 30 seconds, so bear with me. I wasn't gonna, but I was editing and I was like, no, I kind of want to show you guys. When you're laying down, it's sitting like this. This first hose is pinned, so you want to push it from the bottom, take it out, make sure you have something under because a lot of cool one's gonna come out this was in the rear you don't have to take it off it actually connects to the top this one over here you also don't really have to take it off but if you can't take it off it will help you can maneuver this around without taking this one off and then this one up here is also pins just get something in there pull it down it should be good then you can take it off also take the radiator fan out it will help a lot and when you're putting this back do not put this first Put the pump, bolt it in, and then put this in. All right, here are the new, here are the old. This one is a Continental, so I'm guessing they already did change the water pump. This one does say Germany on it, so I think it is the OEM thermostat that was never changed. And this one says Pierberg. I believe this is either OE or OEM, but that being said, I'm just going to put it back because I don't want to look at this anymore. I want to fit it. There's kids crying. Rate the fit, though. Probably like one out of ten. It's pretty. We're looking pretty bad, but... We have done so much maintenance that I'm genuinely scared out of my mind that we're gonna start up the car and everything <laughs> and the car is literally gonna start leaking out of every single place possible. And I feel like I did a, kind of a bad job showing you guys how to do the pump. So for the tranny, I'm gonna set up the camera and actually do my best to show you guys how to do it. I cannot wait to get this exhaust off. I'm stripping the freak out of this. Never mind. I am stripping the crap out of this bolt. Oh my goodness. That's bad. On a scale from one to bad, that's really bad. Rolling came to save the day. Why is this on Not great. We did something. We did something. Do the honors, bro. Do the honors, bro. This is gonna be beautiful right here. Oh, we're draining it from the, from the fill hole. I can tell you my problems. 
Three hours later. I'm uncomfortable with my friends. I'm uncomfortable with my drinking. I'm uncomfortable with my thinking. I'm uncomfortable with my ways. I'm uncomfortable with this space. I'm uncomfortable on good days. I'm uncomfortable on bad days. I'm uncomfortable with my soul. I'm uncomfortable with my heart. I'm uncomfortable with myself. I'm uncomfortable with my. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm uncomfortable with my thoughts. I'm uncomfortable with my feelings. And sadly, I'm uncomfortable with healing. That's the connector and that rubbery part with the ridges. That is the slim sleeve. We gotta take out. Frown too long. I can't stay down too long. Look, running from pain, running from strain, running from things, running from skin. Here we got the whole Megatronic unit. So everything that we're gonna be changing is basically the sleeves and obviously the solenoids, which are right up there. This thing is still leaking oil though, so. The sleeves are on the car, so I believe we're gonna go ahead and do the sleeves first. They're very, very simple. There's a whole bottom of the transmission right there. You can see the clutches right there. This thing is pretty cool. Just like that. You one right here. Right in there, just like that, and these little four ones right here on this side. Alright, we're gonna leave it right here. I honestly don't want to leave this out for too long. So these actually have a little bracket right here. You gotta get rid of that bracket. I know I mostly show just little highlights and stuff, but I actually think this is like pretty cool. Especially if you want to do it yourself. It's not as hard as you think. The hardest thing was getting out the fill bowl. If you can get over that, you'll be right. Oh shoot, it worked. Nice. There's an insane amount of oil coming out of these solenoids and stuff. It like it's ridiculous. Bam. I'm gonna start putting them in just so I don't mix them up. Alright, so it goes like this. Bam. Clicks right on. Glue right here. Bam. Here's the click. All right, we're gonna do it for the rest. Just wanna show you guys, I think this is probably the coolest thing we have done in the car so far. Let's go, baby. You guys may have noticed that under the car, we're not doing the oil pan. So thankfully, the oil pan is not leaking. Now, that doesn't mean it's, gonna, it's not gonna start leaking a little bit tomorrow or the day after that, but I'm doing everything preventative except the oil pan. Same thing goes for the injectors. As you guys know, I did not get index 12s. I am still running the OEM index 8s that I don't think has have ever been switched out. How I'm playing this is if the injectors go bad after we tune it and all that, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and get in, uh, index 12s. And if the index 8s last a year or however long they're gonna last, incredible. I saved a lot of money. And I was influenced a lot by you guys. A lot of you said get the index 12s, but a lot of you did say I've been tuned for two years on index 7s and I've had no issues. There's so many bowls. God damn. And one thing we are gonna do, we're gonna fill it up with fluid. We're gonna start the car, let everything warm up, and then we're gonna open up the fill hole and fill it up even more. Fluid does have to go to all the compartments and then it's gonna be a little lower. So I'm just here filling up the cool and I realized something. Um, the battery's not connected and the trunk closed. Wait, don't, oh, never mind. Ow, crap, I'm stuck. Hallelujah. We're on the way to Gus's house because guess who has a bolt? Beamer Guru himself has a transmission fill bolt. So let's go. Here it is. Dude, this thing was horrible, bro. Oh, you guys love Gus's car. Well, here it is. And we also got the bolt. Let's go, baby. Why do I genuinely feel like I just did another huge motor swap or something? I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm pretty nervous. Fan is in. We did the cooling. Everything's tight down. Oh, I am so nervous. Pulleys. Let's go. We've been waiting a week for this moment. Here we go. Car does not start. All right, here we go. Round two. Please start, please start, please start. Oh, the car does not want to start. Roland's right there, so you know what that means. Everything went to crap. <laughs> What do you mean? Dude, I'm, I don't want to talk right now, bro. 
car doesn't start. I'm getting a P0706. I already know the code by memory. The sleeve is either not all the way in, which I'm pretty sure it is, or he's gonna bring the snap on tool tomorrow and we're gonna clear that code and hopefully the car starts. Roland, what is your opinion on this situation? BMW tanks. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Very expensive snap-on computer. Can we just erase the code? Everything's good. The car drives. Or do we have to take down the pan once again? I'll be honest, if we have to do that again. Here we go. We drop the pan, drain the fluid, push in the sleeve more. Literally use the pry bar to make sure the connectors all the way in. Oh my god, I don't even want to say it. All right, here we go. Let's go. Oh my god, it doesn't start. It does not start. This car won't start. <sighs> Believe it or not, over 24 hours passed. A lot of troubleshooting researching everything came back to the connector and sleeve that i know i 100 percent did correct as i was laying on the bottom of the car waiting for it to fall on me <clears throat> as i was laying in the bottom of the car thinking about how i can fix the problem roland randomly showed up and well this happened if anybody ever needs help just hit up roland here's the instagram he's gonna show up to your house Randomly. Oh, thank God. Right. My first Beamer trouble. We overcame it. Two thumbs up. Third time dropping the pan. Roland magically shows up and look what he notices. So I did not line up this little pin that's part of the mechatronic to the gear shift selector of the car. So this little thingy is supposed to fall into here. Do not forget. Don't be a Danny. All right. Here we go. Oh, the car turned off. I think it's because of the fuel pump. Now, here's the thing. I hope that's actually the fuel rail and not the fuel pump. Okay, the issue was that it was a new high pressure fuel pump, so it needed to get fuel in the system. So everything's good now, I think. I think. It feels so good driving this car right now. Here we go. I'm gonna put it in sport. It sounds so healthy. Driving 40 minutes on the first drive. I'll film. I'll film when we get there. Ryan, I don't know if we're gonna make it, bro. I hear a weird sound coming from the motor. I don't even know, but it feels incredible driving this car. It's just a nice cruiser. Like, it just feels good just cruising on the highway, but we're driving over there. Right now we're going 75, 80 miles per hour. Good so far. No check engine lights, no nothing. Do I put 87 or 93? Thank you. First fill up, here we go. Look at her sitting all stock and purdy. It's been a while and I'm happy. I'm feeling all buddy inside right now. Bubbly inside. Brian, dude, no one cares, bro. Beamer's out. Tranny's good. That dude got toilet paper. When your buddy who's a photographer is like, yo, I'm in town, you wanna take a picture? You have to say yes. I, can't I cannot play a song in the video, but this is my new favorite song. I'm putting it right here. Oh, that looks so good. It's like 2 a.m. and it's also like 30 degrees. What's up, Austin? What's up? What's good? Uh, no, but these pictures are a must. This lighting is insane.
How's the wind? It's freaking cold! <laughs> that thing is crazy!